in Washington, ghost-like objects dart across the radar screen at the CAA Traffic Control Center at National Airport for several hours, traveling more than 100 miles an hour. Air Force jet fighters spend several hours chasing the objects plotted on the radar scope. Something else is out there. There's something else out there, okay. Of all the banks and braes of Bonnie Scotland, none holds more fascination than the murky waters of Loch Ness. Tell me, do you think there is life on other planets? Well, I'm not quite yes. sure, but I suppose there would be. No, he seems definite. He seems definitely. Definite. How do you see this life and where? Oh, I've seen a flying saucer. Blackwater Media presents Dark Fall. Real life encounters with the paranormal and the unexplained. Where do I begin? What I'm about to share with you took place in 2018. I arrived in this small rural town called Cape May. The company I was working for at the time was sending me out to go door to door advertising cable and Wi-Fi that they wanted me to sell. Now I was getting weird vibes all throughout that day as the town itself was very small and a bit creepy with people staring at me or giving me the cold shoulder for the entire day. It seemed like a lot of townsfolk that I encountered that day were on the edge and it was weird. There was a tense atmosphere that I shrugged off as people are weird all the time. I continued doing my job, chugging a Red Bull to keep me going, which surprisingly didn't affect me at all. Besides the weird atmosphere, the scenery was actually quite nice once you got off the main road. I had to stop at different streets and some were in the woods on long and seemingly picturesque endless roads. It was quite scenic. Just before sunset, I was scheduled to visit a few houses on a small peninsula. Now, to get to this peninsula, you had to go down a very long road past a summer camp area, past a trailer park, past the woods, and then you finally found yourself in a small open area with a bay marsh, a couple of expensive houses, and shore access. The houses were so close to the water, it seemed to be a code violation but I was pretty sure they were built to withstand storms since they looked so expensive. Every house had its own theme and the area was mostly deserted. Only one house had someone inside whom I talked to after knocking on its door. I was so distracted looking at the houses and scenery that I didn't notice how fast sunset was approaching. I came to the realization that I should start heading back to avoid being alone on that long deserted pathway in the woods. Now to be honest, I was never one to feel comfortable after dark and isolated places, especially without cell service. So I was making my way down the path, so far so good, and it wasn't completely dark yet. As I approached the wooded area of the road, I was walking a bit faster since there were no street lights and the sunlight was rapidly disappearing. So as I was walking along at a decently fast pace, I noticed something. The woods were eerily quiet. All the life that I'd heard before was gone. No crickets, no birds, just pure silence. I stopped in my tracks and got chills down my spine as I felt the feeling that I was being watched. I looked around the dark woods for any sudden movements and then, like clockwork, something up ahead made its way out of the tree line. It looked to be some kind of large animal and my brain went into overdrive, analyzing whatever this animal might be. Was it a bear? A deer? No. It looked like a large dog. But dogs couldn't get that goddamn big. Nowhere, no how, and under no circumstances. Although I was intimidated by its large size, whatever it was hadn't noticed me. Even though I was scared, I also didn't want to walk back and go into that one man's house that I'd spoken to. I didn't want to hear any shit about being from the city and freaking out by the least little thing out in the wild. I just didn't want to hear it. Now while I'm thinking about this, the large animal in the distance had finally noticed my presence. It was observing me, not entirely sure of what to do with me. There wasn't much light anymore, but I could definitely detect a canine type face. 
whatever I was looking at was definitely too big to be a black bear with a shoulder height of at least five feet on all fours, which is comparable to the size of a brown bear. The mass of this creature was extensive as the outline of what I could see looked like a wolf on steroids. It was muscular as hell. I also noticed that the outline of its face was very similar to that of a German shepherd or a wolf as it had perked ears and a long snout. In the heat of the moment, I could only hear the sound of my heart palpitating as fear and adrenaline started to crawl its way into my bloodstream. I felt as though time were standing still, and then it dawned on me. What I was looking at was not a normal animal, and it was simply too goddamn big to be any animal that I could recognize from the damn New Jersey catalog of fauna. And if it wanted to attack me, I would have been powerless against it. It was just too big. And I tried to calm myself down. I thought of the idea that this creature was out of the ordinary because I could rationalize it somehow. I made my brain go back to the idea of this being maybe a large dog or coyote. I also at the time did not think there was anything to the idea of cryptids. For the most part, I was completely unaware of what size coyotes are supposed to be anyway. So I made a quick decision. Realizing that this could very well be a life or death situation, I came to the conclusion that this very large dog-like creature was probably a skittish coyote that I could scare off, at least temporarily, to calm down my nerves. I mean, think about it. What the fuck are the choice did I have? The longer I kept standing there, the more aggressive I might come across to this animal. And I didn't want it to get territorial or get the idea that I was easy prey. So guess what? I decided I would make the most hideous, loud, confusing, and startling scream or howl I could muster and just sprint the rest of the way. After I hollered and yelled as hard as I could muster, the animal quickly changed its body language to defensive. And then it quickly changed its mind to deciding I maybe wasn't worth a fight. And it ran a decent distance into the woods, but not too far. But here's the shit. It ran upright on two legs. And I thought to myself, what the fuck is going on out here? I decided to sprint as fast as I could past that area and beyond. I sprinted until I reached the end of the road and noticed there was that summer camp area with street lights. I rested on the top of a table, out of breath and feeling my heart pound out of my chest. I was shaken up, but I still had that feeling that I was being watched. So I kept my eyes on the tree line. I was looking for any sign that that creature might still be out there. Once I felt like the coast was clear, I located the next house I was scheduled to visit and I quickly made my way over. I met a nice family who ended up buying cable from me and I told them what happened to me that night and also how I was treated by the locals. The lady of the family, who I presumed to be the mother, said, I don't know why they sent you out here alone. These woods are dangerous after dark and there are creepy people who live around here. Now, the impression she was giving me was that there were animal encounters she couldn't explain. And also there were lots of ex-convicts in the area and people who should have been arrested, but haven't been. And she was also concerned about animals as she said that there were pets, dogs and cats gone missing, never seen again. And that gave me goosebumps too. How many times over the course of the day was I in real danger? Anyway, they were extremely concerned for my safety and told me to contact my team leader so I could get picked up. They said they didn't want me to go outside again and that I should call it quits for the night and not go to any other houses. And to this day, I still have no idea what that creature was. But from what I've read on the internet, people are calling it Dog Man. There are strange things in the woods, things that people don't talk about and sometimes even try to cover it up. I felt like the town folk knew something about what I encountered. And I tell you, this is some shit I don't ever want to have to deal with again.